Welcome back to the channel guys, it's Travis. I'm here to do a one year review on my table saw. And I'm excited to have a special guest here to help me. You know him as the man, the myth, the legend, the mullet maker. What's up YouTube? About a year ago, I bought this DeWalt DWE 7491RS table saw. Do I regret it? Stick around to find out. Yeah, but why entire nation did you buy this saw? Well, I bought this saw because I wanted to get more into woodworking, but I also have a limited amount of garage space. And at the end of the day, I need to be able to fold this saw up, put it in the corner, and then park my car in here. In addition, I really wanted a saw that could take a dado set for fine joinery. I have always liked DeWalt. Plus, this saw came with a rolling, folding stand, and it'll take a dado set. So I went for it. Dude, so how do you like it? <laughs> well, there are some things that I like and some things that I don't like. So let's start with the things that I don't like. The table size. I really wish I had a dedicated woodworking shop so I could have bought a massive table saw and then built a huge outfeed table around it. But I made the best of my situation and I designed this folding outfeed table. Not only has this table made my saw way more useful, I can still fold everything up and store it away at the end of the day. By the way, I have plans for this folding outfeed table available on my website. Without some sort of outfeed table, dealing with four by eight sheets of plywood or long pieces of lumber is super tough and even dangerous. Shoot, I ain't gonna lie, that does sound dangerous. For sure. The other thing I don't like is the depth of cut setting. I noticed as I was making my shaker cell cabinet doors that the depth of cut was actually changing. The vibrations from the saw were actually making the adjustment wheel turn. Not good. I hate that it loosened up, but I figured out that I could tighten this nut and make it good as new. Out of the box, I wasn't able to make a full 45 degree bevel cut without hitting the stop. Then I figured out that there was an adjustment for the bevel stop and I was cutting 45 degrees in no time. Rip capacity. Even when I move the fence out to its extended position, I only have 32 and a half inches of max rip capacity. Although it very rarely limits me, there are times when I wish I had just a little bit more. Man, that is just inappropriate. The included miter gauge is garbage. Buy butter one or make a sled. Heck yeah, if it's free B, it's good for me. <laughs> this saw does not have the safety features of a stop saw, so it's ideal for cutting hot dogs and fingers. <laughs> well, they're cutting tube steaks. What good is this saw? There's actually a lot of things that I do like about this saw. I love that this saw takes a dado set. I usually use it for making dado slots and box joints. The power. Even though there are far more powerful saws out there, I have never had any issues making any cuts in any wood. The rack and pinion fence adjustment. No matter how much you move it, it always seems to stay square. That's really a feature I would expect in a much more expensive saw. The what now? I really like that there's a lot of adjustability to improve the accuracy. You can adjust the 90 degree or the max bevel stops. You can do that by turning these two cams right here, giving you a perfect 90 degree or 45 degree cut. You can adjust the blade to make sure it's perfectly parallel with the miter slot by adjusting the housing. You can do that with either a dial indicator or a combination square. The alignment of the riving knife can even be adjusted and those adjustments are right here. The fence can even be adjusted to be parallel to the miter slot with these adjustment screws. You can also adjust the rib scale, and once you have it set, it's actually quite accurate. And there's even enough adjustment in it to accommodate for the extra three quarter inches for my sacrificial fence. I also really like this fence flippy thing. It does a really nice job supporting thinner plywood when making longer cuts. And for me, the best part is when I'm all done with this saw, I fold it up and stow it away and it takes up very little space. I like that there's a two and a half inch dust extraction port on the back of the saw, as well as one on the blade guard. That being said, I don't really use the blade guard very much because I like to see my cut. I know. Dude, that is just crazy. Most of the tools needed on a regular basis for the saw are stored right on the saw itself, which is really convenient when you need to grab the push stick or you need to change a blade. Well, that's just all fine and dandy, but how'd you make a job site saw work for woodworking? Well, first off, I purchased a few different blades that were better suited for woodworking, including this ripping blade, this combination blade, and this dado set. The dado set includes two blades, three chippers, and spacers. With this set, I can make consistent dado slots, rabbit cuts, and box joints. In order to make box joints, you're also going to need a jig. But in addition to a box joint jig, I also made a crosscut sled for safer, cleaner, more accurate cuts. And a taper jig for making tapered cuts or putting a straight cut on a piece of rough sawn lumber. The zero clearance insert reduces tear out and it also prevents thin cutoffs from falling down into the blade housing. 
One of my biggest upgrades was my folding out feed table. It does a really good job supporting longer work pieces, but it also makes your cut so much safer and easier. I purchased a better miter gauge. It has adjustments to take the slop out of the miter slot. It has very accurate angle settings and has an adjustable fence with a stop. And finally, I upgraded my fence with a piece of UHMW plastic. On this side, I have a super slippery, low friction surface. And on this side, I have a sacrificial fence. Bro, you said a lot of words. Should I buy it or not? If you're limited on space or you need a portable saw, then yes, I would definitely buy this saw. If not, and you have a huge workshop, then I would buy a larger non-portable saw. Well, I can't wait to build more awesome stuff with this saw. I hope you guys liked my review. If you did, please leave me a comment and subscribe. Once you've commented and subscribed, be sure to check out one of these other awesome videos up here and then head over to my website and check out my woodworking plans and my woodworking blogs. See you guys. Hey, you all subscribe to my buddy's channel. You make sure you hit like and you hit comment. You do all the things and you watch the other videos or I'm coming for you. I mean it. I swear, I mean it. We done now? Is that it? Hey, I tell you what, I ain't working for no tube stakes again. <laughs> you fooled me last time. Uh-uh. <laughs>